massive, groundbreaking. Those are just a couple ways to describe the new media rights agreement that the Big Ten Conference recently announced. Why is it massive? Why is it groundbreaking? We'll tell you all about it today right here on Locked on Buckeyes. You are Locked on Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Buckeye fans? Welcome back to another episode of Locked on Buckeyes for the Locked on Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. It is Friday, August 19th in the year 2022, and I want to thank you for making Locked on Buckeyes your first listen or first watch of every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props odds and lines than ever before bet online where the game starts on today's episode we will be joined by ryan dezingle he is a former buckeye hockey player and a captain during his days in columbus who was recently featured on a youtube show with rob riggle an actor and comedian this is a fun show to watch fun conversation with ryan i'm sure you will enjoy it but before we get to any of that The Big Ten Conference, not Big Ten football, not Big Ten basketball, but the Big Ten Conference as a whole just announced a massive seven-year deal worth over $7 billion as their new TV rights agreement includes some new networks and some ways you can stream games as well. CBS joins the party. Paramount Plus joins the party. NBC joins the party. Peacock joins the party. They join the party. Who gets kicked out of the club? The worldwide leader, ESPN. They are no longer a part of broadcasting football or basketball games for schools inside the Big Ten Conference. That is something that I never thought I would say. Even more, ABC, who has been broadcasting Big Ten games since the 60s, I believe 1966 was the first time they broadcast a Big Ten game. They're out of the party as well as they're part of ESPN. Think about how crazy this is. Now, I just mentioned that there's two more broadcasting networks that are involved in CBS and NBC. They both bring along some streaming that will be involved as well. But kicking ESPN up out of the party, kicking them out the club, some of y'all say, great. ESPN does a phenomenal job with college football. I don't care what you think or what you might say about how they operate and some things they do that you dislike or that you like doesn't really matter. They do a great job of covering college football and taking the worldwide leader out of this and then getting this record deal as well. Buddy, the Big Ten is doing something right. There's going to be a couple interesting things about this new deal media rights agreement that I know you'll want to know because you'll want to know where games are, what time these games will be played. Fox is still going to have Big Noon kickoff, their pregame show, and Big Noon Saturday, the 12 o'clock game, which was a premier time slot, a major time slot for Fox last year and for all of college football. So that's not changing. 12 o'clock game, big game on Fox. I still believe that is going to be the... um, When you're drafting these games, Fox gets the first pick of what game they're going to play at 12. Biggest game going to be at 12 o'clock. CBS, the current time slot that is for the SEC, is the SEC is going to be up out of town off of CBS very, very soon. The 330 time slot in 2024, will it be owned by the Big Ten? There will be a primetime game on NBC. Now, that'll be a little bit different because when Notre Dame has primetime games, Notre Dame trumps the Big Ten, so Notre Dame will take that primetime slot, but that does not mean that the Big Ten will not have a game on NBC that day. There will be a select few games that will be on Peacock. I believe eight regular season games, football games, will be on the Peacock streaming app of Universal and NBC. You also have the Big Ten Network. You also have FS1 who are involved in this as well. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six count of seven different ways and areas you can watch Big Ten games. That's more than it is right now. You're adding in broadcast networks. That's huge. The grandmas and grandpas out that are out there, they've been watching Fox and CBS and NBC 
all their lives. And now they know, hey, my favorite channel is going to broadcast Big Ten games. I'm loving it. And then you have the championship games. There's going to be a rotation. Fox will be every other year. But then you have CBS broadcasting in 2024, NBC in 2026, CBS again in 2028. This is great, man. Like, I love this. I have said, I don't know if I said it here before, but I know I've said it other places. It would be great for college football to do something that the NFL does and rotate networks that different networks every year broadcast the national championship game and the Super Bowl. Joe Buck, who's now at ESPN, um, and Jim Nance, they know when CBS's turn comes around or ESPN's, well, formerly for Joe Buck, when Fox's time comes around, Al Michaels, when he was at NBC, they know when it's their turn to host, to, to cover the Super Bowl and to call the Super Bowl because it's that network's time in the rotation. Now we have these networks that are in rotation to cover the biggest conference championship game or one of the bigger games in the in the conference every year it's a trophy game not just a rivalry trophy but it's a conference championship trophy it means something it's one of those games that's on every school's to-do list every school's checklist it's a goal not just get there but to win and now you're getting cbs and nbc in the fold in the mix this is huge more exposure This is going to provide more jobs for people. This is huge for the Big Ten. And I'm excited. I know people have ripped Kevin Warren for a lot of things. I know people have been disgruntled with Kevin Warren for the way that he has done certain things. But under his watch, USC and UCLA have come to the Big Ten. You may say, well, Jay, Kevin Warren wasn't really a big part of that. Hey, it's down on what he did, what was under his watch while he was there. Now you can say there's a record television deal that's adding NBC, adding CBS, adding a couple ways that games can be streamed while Kevin Warren is the head man there, whatever you say, something is making sense. If he is putting the dollars and cents and saying those are really important and getting Big Ten football and basketball in the homes of people in the three largest television markets, he's accomplishing a goal. It's a record goal. It's a record deal. I'm excited, man. I mean, these kids that are playing these games, they're going to be on more networks, more exposure for them. Maybe some more NIL deals will come their way. <laughs> Bravo. That's all I got to say. Bravo for the Big Ten. They got this thing right. Coming up next, Ryan Dezingo, former Buckeye hockey player, who was also a captain, will discuss a show he recently did with Rob Riggle, an actor and comedian. You've probably seen him in numerous TV shows or movies. This show, it's fun, neat, it's fun to watch. And this conversation with Ryan, it was fun as well. Stick around, you don't want to miss this. This is Locked on Buckeyes. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live in game betting, scores, and podcasts. They have you covered. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. Bet Online, where the game starts. Thanks again for making Locked on Buckeyes your first listen every day. The alternate college football preview is here. A seven-episode preview with college experts, local team experts, and Odyssey College Football Insiders. It's everything you need to be ready for the college football season in one spot. Search for ultimate college football preview on your Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your fun podcast. And joining us now here on Locked on Buckeyes, it is a former Ohio State hockey captain and current member of the Carolina Hurricanes. It is Ryan the Zingle. Ryan, welcome to the show, Ben. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. Ryan was recently on a show with Rob Riggle, and I got to catch a glimpse of it. It's funny, as you would expect. There's golf involved, and so there's uh, some passions of people. It's humor, so we all love that. But I don't want to get to the golf just yet, Ryan. You are a former Ohio State hockey captain, and that's not something that many people can say about themselves while at Ohio State playing any sport. 
What was it like being a Buckeye and playing hockey in Columbus? Yeah, it's definitely one of the best things that, uh, you know, I've ever done. Uh, as a kid, I didn't know much about Ohio State, didn't know much about Ohio. It's not one of those stories where, you know, you grew up, grew up close to Ohio and, and uh, you, you know, you bleed scarlet and gray right away. I was uh, from Chicagoland area and I didn't know much about, you know, the Michigan-Ohio State rivalry. And uh, I got to know it very quick and uh, it turned into something that, you know, uh, that I cherish so much. And uh, obviously, like you said, my time at Ohio State was amazing. My coaching staff, my, my teammates, my friends. Um, it was just, uh, it was something I'll never forget. And, uh, you know, some of those guys are still there. Steve Rollick, still the head coach doing, you know, great things with the program. I think when I got there, the Ohio State hockey team wasn't as good as they are now, it wasn't even close to as good as they are now. And uh, he's a huge part of that. So it's great to see their success. And, uh, Hopefully, you know, they can continue. Obviously, the football team is a big thing around town there, but, uh, you know, hockey's getting a little bit uh, more exciting and more people are watching it. What were some of the um, moments? You mentioned the rival rivalry between Michigan and Ohio and football. That is that is the thing. That is the game. I'm sure it's the same way in hockey. What kind of stood out the first time you played the Wolverines in hockey? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, their, their arena and uh, – their setup at Michigan is is pretty uh, pretty unreal for the hockey team. So just going into their building and, and having a chance to beat them and um, just obviously you're you're taught to hate them uh, as much as you can. So uh, obviously it's circled on the calendar every year and you know it sounds like a cliche, but it's definitely the most important game of the year besides heading into the playoffs and the and the NCAA tournament. So uh, we love playing them and. Uh, we always got more fans. They always got more fans. So all around, it was just a better experience. Were you a trash talker in those games? I want to say, I was, you know, when I was a kid, when I was younger, I, I was, uh, you know, a little bit more vocal and okay. thought I was a little cooler than I was. So I think I definitely was the guy that ran his mouth a little too much and, uh, you know, did some things that probably shouldn't have. But in the heat of the moment, it was it was a lot of fun. We hear a lot about football, and I keep going back to this rivalry with Michigan. What was there a play or a moment that you made in that in one of those games that kind of sticks out to you this day? Like I know in the rivalry game, I could tell this story for years and years and years to come. Uh, maybe not me, you know myself. Okay. I did a lot of a lot of stupid things, you know. Oh, uh, celebration when I scored in 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 uh, Yost Arena, just kind of arrogant, stupid things, but. I remember one of my best friends, Aaron Gretz, was actually our backup goalie because uh, he was on the baseball team and we had a kid transfer and one kid get hurt. So we it's not that easy. It's not like pro hockey where you can just, you know, sign somebody, call somebody, make a deal, get a new guy in. It's, it's very difficult to find a goalie. And he was a Minnesota goalie for a very long time. And uh, I remember him at Yost thinking he was going to get in because our goalie got ran into. And I'll never forget the look in his eye like, oh, my goodness, is this actually happening right now? So. He was the starting catcher on the baseball team and he walked down for us. Wow. And threw his gear on for like two or three months to figure it out. And it was crazy. It was actually a surreal story. And I can never forget that. He's like, am I going in? And I looked at him and I'm like, dude, this is it here. It's a tie game at Yost Arena. It's like a Minnesota kid. That's something you would dream of. Uh, hockey's a huge thing. And uh, he ended up not getting in. And <laughs> I oh, think, man. yeah, it would have been cool for him, but a little nervous at the same time. So that's something I'll never forget. Oh, yeah. What does it mean to you now some years removed from playing at Ohio State, but what does it mean to you to be a Buckeye? Yeah, it means everything. I think, uh, like I said, pro hockey is awesome, but uh, you're always going to make the best relationships in college. You're always going to learn the most. You're always going to get molded uh, to get to the next level. So I think I was, uh, you know, obsessed with, you know, hockey as I was in uh, Ohio State. I just, that's all I did, all I wanted to do. And, uh, you know, Hope my mom's not listening, but I would skip classes to go back to the rank to work out with my teammates, Matt Johnson and and other guys and skate twice a day. So I think uh, obviously they take care of you top notch at Ohio State. There's nothing that you don't have to prepare yourself. So it's basically on you. If if you go there and you don't succeed and don't get better, I feel like it's it's your fault. You're not putting the work in. They have the greatest facilities, the best food. It's the beautiful, most beautiful campus, you know, great people. So I met not only great hockey players, but great other athletes. We were forced to go to Yunkin to study and, 
and meet all the other guys. So I've have lifelong teammates and lifelong friends in baseball and, and other sports as well. So, uh, obviously nothing but great things to say molded me to who I am today. Nothing but great things. I ventured that, uh, there may be some great stories from you and Rob Riggle doing this show, your wife as well, um, playing around with Rob Riggle. It's put on by PXG and PXG has, uh, the, the finest golf clubs and equipment, custom engineered for golfers of every skill level. You can check them out at pxg.com. And this whole show, this series, I like that you're your first year because it's a great contrast between your wife and what she does and you on the on the golf course. But when you first met Rob Riggle and got the introduction to him while beginning beginning to shoot this 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 show. What were your thoughts? Because I know he's a goofy guy, but I know it may be different than you think when you meet him in person. Yeah, you know how it's always like that. It's with, you know, athletes or anyone that you meet that's a celebrity that you uh, were excited to meet. Sometimes it's different. And for me, I've never really hung out with actors. I've hung out with musicians, uh, baseball players, all the, you know, all the main sports and have really close friends in those areas. But I never really hung out with too many actors or guys that are comedians like him. So it was a little different at first. And uh, obviously he's a lot older than me too. So uh, he was, he was awesome. He, I couldn't stop, literally couldn't stop laughing the entire day. And it was like, it, it's just not, he's not even like, it's just the way he acts. You know what I mean? It's not even like, I couldn't even remember one line that he said was funny. It's just like him. Like I was just looking at him laughing, like literally for 15 straight minutes when I first met him. And like, he was, he was so down to earth, so cool. So um, a little quick story. When I first, uh, we first couple outtakes, he uh, he called me like a left back mid instead of a left winger. Like he literally butchered like my position. And then I was like, dude, that's, that's so bad. I can't believe you messed up with me. And then later on, I was talking about a movie that he wasn't even in that I thought <laughs> was him. And I absolutely was so embarrassed for the rest of the day. I'm like, this guy's going to hate me. Like, what am I doing? Like, he's such a good uh, comedian. And so obviously we smoothed both of those things over by the end. But uh, yeah, it was, it was, you know, a whole morning, a whole day of just unbelievable time. Obviously PXG, I can't even explain to you how top notch and how cool Scottsdale National is. Uh, everything was just above and beyond. And my wife is so lucky to work there. So uh, it was it was absolutely a cool experience. I was nervous and didn't really want to do it at first and uh, wasn't used to that lifestyle with those cameras and everything, but it turned out to be a lot of fun. It seems like it, just by listening to you talk about it, to see the smile and sometimes the laughter coming laughter coming out, it seems like you really enjoyed it. Um, your wife, being a PXG ambassador, has a certain connection with PXG, and I think she was able to introduce you to somebody new who's a comedian and funny, but also a different challenge for you as well with all the cameras around you. The average person does not do anything for any length of time with one camera in front of their face. You had multiple. What was that experience like? Yeah, like you said, it's it's been a blessing uh, my whole career getting to do things that you wouldn't normally do, right? Like, uh, why did I get to have this experience? Uh, it, it was just it was just awesome. It was a blessing. And like you said, my wife kind of pushed me into doing it. I was really uh, reluctant on doing it. I didn't want to do it at all. And uh, she kept talking to me about it. And like you said, it's something cool, something new that you're not used to doing and challenging yourself. So um, to be honest, I wish I could do it again, uh, the, like after the first time. It's just like anything else. You, you kind of learn and uh, it, it, you learn very quickly in that business because Rob and Elise were so so easy and flowing everything was just one take one take one take and it's a lot harder than you think it would be and uh just to be natural in front of the camera when you have literally they had probably eight to 12 golf carts just driving around with cameras they had so many people i literally thought it was just gonna be like two cameras some you know i shouldn't have obviously I shouldn't have thought of that with pxg and scottsdale national scottsdale national is the best golf course in arizona it's like I can't even explain. It's like crazy. It's like a different world when you drive through those gates. So like, I should have known that, but, uh, I wish I could do it again. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully it came out pretty good and I don't get made fun of too much by my teammates. So we'll see. <laughs> oh boy. I, I never even thought about the teammate aspect about you having to go back into the locker room at, you know, all, they're all going to watch it. They're all going to laugh. Why are you so nervous here? Why didn't you say anything there? 
why would you swing like this? Like they're ready to get on your head as soon as you get back to the locker room, Ryan. So I'm, I would love to have you back on if it's possible. Uh, I would love to just even like talk to you and be like, Hey man, what were those conversations like in the locker room once you got back there? Because I, I know how guys are. I know how locker rooms are. They're going to get on your, they're going to get on your head for a few things that maybe you may have been like nervous about, but they're just like, Hey, these are things for us to laugh about because Ryan's our teammate. Yeah. Luckily I've been bouncing around a, two, a few teams lately that, you know, I have new guys coming in and uh, I won't be getting made fun of uh, quick enough when this video comes out. So, uh, yeah, I've already had a few of my friends and people, you know, chirping me already about, you know, saying I chunked one when really I, you know, I hit it 30 yards. It wasn't it wasn't slight chunk, but I actually played really well through those like three, four, five holes that we played. So I, they made it seem like I was a legit, legit golfer. But uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. How was it playing golf with your wife? Is that kind of one of those competitions where it's just like, I know, like, a go I, you got, the title is the couple that plays together stays together. So it's kind of coupling like a couple that plays golf and the fun they have with it. How is it with you guys playing golf together in your downtime? Yeah, that's what we always have done since we, we met each other. That's kind of where, you know, things click for us. I always enjoyed golf playing with my dad and my brother. And then she was like a golfer since she was four years old. So like a lot of people don't know that. I think uh, a lot of, you know, people on Instagram and a lot of girls on Instagram kind of found their niche to, you know, play golf and guys like watching them and maybe they haven't played very much, but she's like legit a golf nerd. Like she's, she's a good looking girl, but she loves golf. She's been playing since she was four. And so she takes it pretty serious when we're out there, which uh, gets kind of heated. I think she's a, she's a scratch golfer when she plays, you know, one up or from the ladies tees. So I try to make her play from the tips by me uh, to even things out. But you know, that's, that's been a big part of our relationship and what's helped us out a lot to get, in, get to know each other and, you know, have a lot of fun. And I know it uh, sucks sometimes when you, know, you don't get to go out with the boys and, you know, the wife always knows where you're going, which course you're going to. But at the same time, it's, it's been a blessing for us because uh, not many people get to do that with their wife. That is true. If you were to do this once again, as you said, you would love to do it again. What's one thing you would change to be maybe more comfortable in front of the camera or maybe even have more fun you can put both of those in the answer yeah I, I feel like I just wasn't talking as much because okay. I just wanted them to you know I felt like they knew what they were doing they're more comfortable let them go and I kind of was just you know there a lot and uh, I think uh, it's probably going to be a lot better when you see the video because it, it's all crammed down and all um you know, instead of hours of video, it's just going to be a few minutes. So it's probably going to look a lot better than I think. I'm probably just being critical on myself. But uh, it's just hard to be natural in something that you're not used to doing. Like when I first played my first NHL game, I think I played two minutes and 10 seconds. I got scored on and I took a penalty. So like it was horrible. I wish I could do that again. But, you know, it, it made me have experience and learn. And so uh, I was just not as, as comfortable as I uh, should have been out there. Last thing for you, football season's coming up. The Ohio State starts their football season September 3rd. A lot of high expectations for this year's Buckeye football team. I'm excited for the football season. What are your thoughts or even expectations for Buckeye football in 2022? I just I just don't think there ever is not expectations with Buckeye football ever since I've got there, whatever, 10 years ago. Uh, you know, it's, it's win or, uh, you know, we're going to be upset, so... It's kind of one of those things, you know, where there was the Yankees back in the day, the Patriots back in the day. It's just Ohio State, you know, we expect winning. I don't, I don't know why that is or if that's too harsh on them every single year, but that's that's just kind of what it is. The mentality and the culture around is uh, that's that's the thing around town. You know, we, we're closing streets down. We're, we're, you know, hundreds of thousands of people are coming to that game, so you better be ready to go. And I think I think they know that and the culture around the football team when I was there, and I can't speak for it now, but it's top notch, you know, those guys, that's all they do. They, you know, they, they breathe, they bleed, they, they do everything for that, you know, for that uh, uniform. So I expect nothing else but winning. It's kind of, it's always shocking when they lose, you know, it's just like this weird, it's just like this weird feeling. It's like, no, it's not going to happen. No, down 17, no, we're going to be fine. So uh, I think it's just the culture they built, which is so awesome. It's, you know, uh, high expectations and, and very good results. So, I didn't look too much into this season, but I'm assuming it's going to be the same thing. 
<laughs> I do believe so. Ryan Dezingle, he was in the first episode of play uh, playing around with Rob Riggle. Him and his wife were there, and it's titled The Couple That Plays Together Stays Together. They're playing golf with a comedian. Yes, it's as fun as it, you think it is. Uh, his wife is a, an ambassador for PXG, and it, it's on PXG's YouTube channel. Go check it out. It's out right now. It came out on Thursday. This is a Friday, so just – Many of you are just at work, relaxing. You have the YouTube ch uh, show, This Locked on Buckeyes, on your computer. Flip over to PXG at the end of this and check that out as well. You'll get laughs. You'll see Ryan. You'll see his wife. You'll see Rob Riggle. And it's fun for everyone involved. Ryan Dezingo, former Buckeye hockey captain, current member in the NHL uh, for the Co Carolina Hurricanes. Thanks for coming on Locked on Buckeyes, man. This was a lot of fun. I've never talked this much golf on one show on any <laughs> that I've done. I've enjoyed every second of it. Ryan, thanks for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. It was a blast.